Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Tonight, what I'm hoping to do is let you know if it's worth picking up or checking out Smash Up Disney Edition. This is a new version of Smash Up featuring Disney characters from the op, who I do have to thank for sending us a review copy of this game. Now, this is a new standalone version of Smash Up that is, of course, compatible with all the Smash Up stuff that's out there that came before it, but specifically with Disney characters. This has eight different factions, which sounds kind of weird when you're talking about Disney characters, and a total of 180 cards. That's probably pretty much what you get in here. Maybe there's counters and other stuff. I don't know, because I haven't played this yet. So let's put it down on the table, crack this open, and find out what you get with Smash Up Disney Edition. All right, here you have my new copy of Smash Up Disney Edition. I just removed the shrink, that's it. So one of the things I'm going to point out right away is when you get the game, the box lid doesn't fit. So I have to assume there's probably going to be some cardboard punch outs in there. And I've got to say, I appreciate when companies do this, if it means that the box lid is then tight once I do punch everything and put it back in the box. So just you'll note that right at the start here doesn't quite cover the box. So we're going to crack this open, take a look at what it's got. So this is a, a combined, the op and AEG work together to do this. So the op had the Disney license, AEG has the smash up license, obviously. So we start off with the shuffle building game of total awesomeness, smash up rule book, Disney edition. So we're going to flip through this pretty quickly. This explains the, the card anatomy of the character and action cards, as well as the bases. And there are going to be dividers in here, which is pretty cool. Um, rule book, nice and clear. Look at all the white space. I got to say the bonus points for the layout here. Um, okay. I haven't played smash up in a long time, but this is kind of cool. There's now a place to put your cards and track everything. So you don't have to do it on your head. I got to say that that seems like a bonus to me, but it also makes the game more kid friendly. So there's less math required if everything's adding up as you're playing stuff. So that's, that's a cool thing though. I got to say, it's going to be hard to remember to actually track this stuff. Um, who's on your side. All right, so it's going through the different phases. Of course, the cards are going to have the same card back. Here's your score points. Um, no, what's weird is it went from like tons of white space to wall of text. Kind of strange. And even more wall of text. Okay, this is just explaining different keywords and terms. That's fair. What power counters are for, game turns and restrictions, clarifications. There's a good indication this game's been out for a long time. Look at all these clarifications on specific cards. Wow. That's a lot. All the key things clear. And then a few provisos. Wow, there's a lot of clarifications here. Okay, this is cool. So suggested mashups, that's a nice touch. Wow, this is a big one. And then, oh, that's more. More suggested. Roll credits. And look at all the play testers. Holy cow. And the op play tested a little bit. <laughs> that's actually plenty, but I'm just surprised by the AEG group. But that's probably every version of Smash Up that's out there. And I've got to say, a game where you're mashing two decks together to fight against two other random decks probably needs that for balance. Uh, then we have the list of the factions here, which tells you the, the various Disney factions are going to have here. So there is a punch card. And yes, this is the reason the box wasn't quite fitting totally. Once these are punched out, you won't have a problem. So you have your different trackers, your points, and on the other side, your power bonuses if you need them. Two punch cards, all really well punched, actually. That popped out nice and easy. I don't even see any little taggies on there. Nice touch. Then you get lots of room. Wow. Um, I get it. Smash Up has lots of expansions, and if you this is your this is a core set. So it makes total sense to have this much extra room for expansions and whatever. But holy cow, that's a lot of wasted space in this box. So then we have the, the areas that you're going to put up your, I can't remember what they're called, monuments? I think they're called monuments. You're going to put your monument cards with your little tokens to track who has power with players playing on each side. Oh, nice. There's a setup on the back. Bases. Sorry, not monuments. Bases. So it tells you how to set up, how to set up place bases and how to play. So I guess if you have less than four players, you're going to have a reference card. Then we have, uh, of course, the actual bases. These come in resealable plastic, which I'm probably not going to bother putting back in the box. So we're just going to flip through these. These should be Disney places. The Power Strip, The Dump, Sultan's Palace, Agrabah, Bazaar, 
Forbidden City, Training Camp, Enchanted Castle, and so on. I'm not going to go through all of these. Each of these, of course, has the points for controlling it, the tipping point when you're going to score the area, and special rules. So we're going to throw that in here somewhere. Um, while I haven't tested it, it feels like there's enough give here for sleeved cards. Okay, we have a baggie. And oddly, these frozen... Oh, these are the dividers. Okay, so the dividers are separate. So we have... Oh, these are thick. Like, they're plastic. That is nice. That is the nicest card divider I have ever seen in a game. Though I'm a little confused by how it works in this box. Like, it's... I have no idea. I'd have to check the instructions to understand how these dividers work. So in this set, we are getting Frozen, Aladdin... Wreck-It Ralph, Nightmare Before Christmas, Beauty and the Beast, Big Hero 6, Mulan, and The Lion King. And, and like, super thick! Oh, and they've got the, the back showing the symbols for the cards. Cool. Then we have lots of cards, which is kind of what I expected. So I'm just going to take all these. Bunch of cards. In the box were four different shrink wrapped decks of cards what i'm going to do is quickly go through these because they'll have to be sorted so right here we have wreck it ralph cards there's definitely duplication some cards there's more than one copy of going to quickly go through these um obviously art from the movie all wreck it ralph cards and then we end so that is the end of the wreck it ralph cards so i'm going to take my wreck it ralph cards and you know what you can see this so i'm going to just throw that there wreck it ralph card then we have uh, Big Hero 6. Looks like more variety in the cards in Wreck-It Ralph. No, it's still quite a bit of duplication. Again, artwork from the movie, which makes sense. Power. You've got upgrades. You've got various action cards. Now, again, the cards are split into characters and actions. Characters tend to stay in play. Actions may or may not. So we have that set here. So it looks like two characters per deck. Uh, I'm going to guess Beauty and the Beast. Yes. So we have the Beauty and the Beast cards. So again, there's some duplication, but that's always been a part of Smash Cup. The teacup, Lumiere. Got a... No one uh, does card arc like Gaston. So on. Beauty and the Beast. Lion King. Yeah, all Lion King. card quality is fine. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I would assume it matches all the existing versions of Smash Up out there. Uh, then we get Aladdin. So we go through the Aladdin cards quick. Then we have Frozen. Mulan. And finally, my favorite of the bunch, Nightmare Before Christmas. So no new card art for this. These are all screenshots or film scenes. Um, we're not getting any like brand new art for any of these cards or actual shots from the actual Disney movies. There you go. All spread out. There's not as much room in here as you would think once you split the decks out. Uh, definitely enough room for sleeve cards. So that's a nice touch for those of you who like to sleeve. Um, and I do have to thank my partner, Sean, for confirming these are for the Big Geeky box, which I don't have, so I'm just going to toss these in loose. Interestingly, like, you've got a spot for all the cards. There's nowhere, like, to put, well, I'll think of your baggies, but there's nowhere to put the punch outs. Like, it seems odd that there wouldn't be, like, something, I don't know, a solid trough to put these in. And again, the, the new... They even branded this, so it's not even like a generic smash-up. They branded the um, base cards, I guess you call them, base location spots. Yeah, a couple baggies for these different tokens, which I guess it just get you toss in, in here. The surprisingly thick and complicated-sounding rulebook for what I know is a pretty simple game. There is a lot of text in there. It's just weird that it starts off so spaced out to so dense, so quickly. 
Looking forward to trying it. Hoping my kids dig it. I think they will. So there you go. What you get in the box with the latest edition of Smash Up, the latest Disney edition, a new standalone starter set that, of course, works with all the other Smash Up stuff that's out there. You've got eight factions in here representing eight different Disney movies. And of course, the way you play is you're going to pick two of those, smash those two decks together, shuffle them together, and then play a game of area control trying to take over various bases. Um, looks fantastic. Card quality is just as expected. Now, I will note that all of the artwork, though, is just like stills from the various movies. There doesn't seem to be any new artwork added to this game, which is fine. I want it to look like the movies. I don't want it to look like something different, um, but it's probably going to stand out compared to some other Smash Up sets. Uh, box insert seems very serviceable, but there's no spot to put tokens or anything like that, which is a bit of a disappointment for me. I would have liked at least one well or something just to kind of dump everything in. But that's fine. There is room for expansion content, though, which is a nice bonus. They also give you really thick card dividers, which I appreciate. But from what I understand, they're actually just something you use in the big geekier box. So if you don't have that, that seems like a bit of a waste. I almost wonder if the price point could have been a bit lower and they could have sold those separately. But if you've got the big geekier box, you get some nice bonus content. For the rest, of you get some nice thick cards that have Disney characters on them. I guess that's worth something. So that's it. That's what you get in the box for Smash Up Disney Edition, a joint effort from The Op and AEG. To hear my thoughts on this, your best bet is to follow me on social media. I can be found everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop One Word. Once we get reviews up, you'll be able to find them on YouTube, youtube.com slash Tabletop Bellhop, and our blog, tabletopbellhop.com. You also get to hear about it on our podcast, which you can watch us record live Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Tabletop Bellhop. You see the trend? You got it? Slash Tabletop Bellhop. Uh, if you dig this video, it'd also be awesome if you went to patreon.com. You know. Good day and game on.